Arkansas and Texas A&M in a series that goes back 99 years and the tip controlled by Texas A&M and Wade Taylor the fourth. Aggies coming off of a win Saturday on the road at LSU. Here's Taylor, little floater, and that's good. They take and make tough shots, those guards for A&M. Boots Radford and Wade Taylor. Really good at that 10, 12 foot mark. Anthony Black got off to a good start in Arkansas's win at home, uh, pardon me, loss at home to Mississippi State last time out. Hit a couple of early threes. Later we'll tell you why that might work against the Hogs. Black off the mark, rebound by Dexter Dennis. Good job by Coleman to defend that drive with his chest. Got his hand showing. Marble was begging for the ball, got the touch inside, but couldn't finish. And an Arkansas near turnover. Black trying to whip it inside. Black Tom, is he's such a threat to bring that ball off the defensive glass and get Arkansas into the run game quickly. One of the better rebounding guards in the country is zero in red. Great rebounding guards in this one, including Tyrese Boots Radford for A&M. Council into the corner, a ball fake and a three. And it's good. And that is big for Arkansas. They only make about five per game, below 30%. And Devo Davis is their best three-point shooter in conference play. Taylor lost his man. Council tripped over the three-point line. Marble to Coleman. Arkansas won the battle of the bigs last time. And another block here early on. That's Mikai Mitchell. Had three blocks in the first matchup. His twin, Mikhail, at seven. Kale off the mark. Dennis launches a three. AM not known for its tempo, Jim. Yeah, and, and Dennis is not known as a transition three point shooter. A challenge at the rim, and Council's turned away. There will be nothing easy in this game tonight on either end. And both teams so aggressive, protecting the rim on the glass, big bodies inside. A lot of rim collisions in this one. Radford turned around, looked like he had a path that was cut off immediately. Shot clock now at seven. Challenge shot goes off the top of the backboard. Taylor way off the mark. Arkansas defensive right now early, making Texas A&M take some really tough shots to start this game. Black challenge and picks up the foul. And maybe a little extracurricular. Terry Oglesby... These officials want to keep this in control. No, early, absolutely. And now, Texas A&M took that loss at Arkansas hard, and they felt like they did so many good things, they just couldn't finish at the rim. So the point of interruption is baseline out of bounds under was not a shooting foul. So here's Council, and it's stripped from behind by Taylor. Davis shares it, and Anthony Black for three. Got it with three yeah, seconds ter left. Terrific swing the ball, swing the ball one more by Arkansas. Texas A&M really playing with a crowded court defensively, forcing Arkansas to take jump shots. They've gone final on Rocky Top. Tennessee knocked off Alabama. Remember, they beat Nick Saban's number one Alabama team in football. There's Dennis with the back cut. A couple of huge wins and one that Tennessee needed. All right, Ravi, thanks, and welcome to Aggieland, a sold-out Reed Arena. Tom Hart alongside Jimmy Dykes. Tennessee knocks off Alabama, and that has a ripple effect here with the Texas A&M Aggies. They get Alabama to close the season. If they take care of business, they could be playing that night for a conference title. Ricky Council with a personal foul. That's his first. We'll get to this game in just one moment. But here's what the standings look like now. Alabama suffers its first loss. A&M 
has now won five out of six. They're sitting at 10 and two in the league, Jimmy, and a huge opportunity for Buzz Williams' team, which really turned this thing around at about the new year. Yeah, they really have been outstanding. Winners of five of six in SEC play, the team in white. How do they do it? They drive the ball, they get to the free throw lane, and they crash that glass as well as anybody in this league. Here's Coleman on the interior, and that's off the mark. Rebound by Dexter Dennis, and he'll bring it back out. To my point, A&M had 24 offensive rebounds in their loss at Bud Walton. And can Arkansas keep the Aggies off that offensive glass? Another block for the Hogs. They had a block party when they met at Bud Walton, and that was an Arkansas blowout. One of only two conference losses for A&M. A&M coming off of a win Saturday in Baton Rouge. Arkansas with a disappointing loss at home to Mississippi State. After they had gone on a nice little win streak. Here's Anthony Black. And he's unable to finish. The ones you got to make is Texas A&M really shrinking the floor defensively. Gap heavy. And when Arkansas gets opportunities at that rim, they have to finish. A&M is 2 for 8 from the floor. 0 for 2 from 3. And that's going to be on Black. It's the first on the freshman from Capel High School here in Texas, Anthony Black. Low scoring affair early. Arkansas leads a You have to keep the Aggies off the offensive glass. They got 24 offensive rebounds in that matchup in Bud Walton. And, uh, Texas A&M wasn't able to finish around the rim, Tom. They missed half of their shots around the rim. Don't expect that tonight if you're Arkansas. Hogs already have two blocks tonight. A&M 0 for 2 at the rim here in the first five minutes of this one. Here's Boots Radford on the curl. And the pull-up is off the mark, but it's rebounded down by Arkansas and Makai Mitchell. Those Mitchell twins already defensively in that drop coverage, forcing Texas A&M to take a lot of 10, 12-foot shots already in this game. Inside to Mitchell, he'll spin, and the drop step took him too far. Rebounded by Anderson Garcia just into the game for A&M. Eric Musselman hasn't subbed yet. An early three from Radford is short. That's a, now the second early threes, three that A&M has taken in a possession. Yeah, and that's not their strength. They come in A&M making less than six a game at 32% in conference play. Wade Taylor's the one guy, number four, in white that you have to match in transition. And Texas A&M has guarded himself a little bit early with those early transition threes. That's not their DNA. Eric Musselman squad, even money in the SEC 6-6. Six and six. They started 1-5, but they've won five out of their last six. By the way, Jordan Walsh in the game for Arkansas. He's got a new number for this one, wearing 55. Apparently, you left his jersey back in Fayetteville. <laughs> well, he's, he's still a heck of a player no matter what jersey he wears. I know if, for, if it would have been your job, it wouldn't have fit in your rental car. Uh, no, no chance. <laughs> I drove from Houston to College Station today with my head cocked sideways. That's how small my rental car is. Loose ball. And it's taken by Anthony Black. Mentioned Eric Musselman in the subs. He's got three of the top minutes eaters in the SEC, but he's also got a weapon back, and that's Nick Smith Jr. who awaits to check in at the next dead ball. If you're Texas A&M, you have to keep Anthony Black above Go. the free throw line. Not only Anthony Black, but Arkansas, they are determined to get that ball inside. Not easy. Aggies continue to shrink the floor defensively. The determination by Arkansas is a little bit higher. On the other end, Arkansas's defense has been great all year. and They've held A&M to an 0 for 5 and now 1 for 10 skid. Tom, that's just not the offensive start that Buzz Williams wants. The A&M is a pound the ball inside first team. They're settling for threes early against Arkansas. Black can't finish in the paint. Four of AM's 11 attempts have come from deep. Here's Coleman. That one was halfway home. It didn't go. The pretty good defense again by Mitchell to force a tough two. And you've done your job if you keep Marble and Coleman away from the rim taking jump shots. Walsh, a significant part of this star-studded recruiting class for Arkansas. And so was Black, rated the number one shooting guard in the country. Shares it. Davis for three. Off the back of the rim and then over the back on Mackay Mitchell. 
Tom, that's an awkward 2-1-2 zone passing people off by Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. And talking to Musk today about it, he said, man, we're just going to run our offensive stuff and cut that thing up, drive the ball, try to get that zone in defensive rotation. A good job of Arkansas to find the backside, just miss the three. And so, Nick Smith Jr. on the floor. This return last time played 17 minutes in their home loss to Mississippi State. He'd been out for a good chunk of the season trying to protect that knee. It gave him issues before he even got there. And on that last play, Walsh took a shot to the face. Well, three, three in red is projected to be a lottery pick, Nick Smith Jr. And he's missed way more games than he's played this year. And Nick, Nick Smith told me two and a half weeks ago, I will be back. And I felt confident when he looked me in the eyes and told me that. And 17 minutes against Mississippi State on Saturday. And how does the chemistry for Arkansas hold up blending in a new guy this late? Another block for the Razorbacks. Here's Smith to push it. Good bounce pass. And you're talking about their shoot around today. Chemistry in terms of personality is a great fit. It's another thing, though, to be worked in from a time perspective. Absolutely, because Arkansas's chemistry at Kentucky last Tuesday was exceptional. And A&M steal, and now the Aggies looking for an easy bucket, but they just can't find any. Four for 11 to start this game. Those long 25-foot passes against Texas A&M will not work. They're sitting in the gaps with really active hands. Great D by Walsh. Council almost tipped it. A force runner rims out for Andre Gordon. Once again, A&M struggling to finish against Arkansas around the arc. Debo Davis finds Mitchell, and that's an offensive foul. Just a really bad read by Mikhail Mitchell. He gets the pocket pass. Texas A&M so well schooled on that help side defense. He's got to stop, elevate straight up and dig one of the Mitchell twins. And Arkansas has had great success playing both those bigs together. And Eric Musselman now has to kind of reinvent his team for the fifth or sixth time this year. He was reminded by his mom, Chris, <laughs> by the way, you're coaching now your sixth team this season. But it's a, uh, you know, Nick Smith is a difference maker talent. He's missed 13 games. It will take him a while to get back in his groove, but it's certainly worth the risk and the gamble to get this guy going if you're Eric Musselman. Well, about that point, what is a fair expectation in terms of getting back into the rhythm and getting him back to what would be perhaps a lottery pick? When You're not playing UNC Greensboro. No, you're, you're in the not. middle of a conference season, and you're sitting on the right side of the bubble. That is a very big piece of the puzzle for Eric Musselman. You're in must-win situations right now, and you're trying to work a new guy in. I think the hopes is for Arkansas to be clicking with Nick Smith on all cylinders by the time they get to Nashville in that SEC tournament. Here's Garcia with the ball on the floor. By the way, bad news out of Gainesville. Colin Castleton, we're told, suffered a broken hand in the Gators game tonight. They'll be in Bud Walton Arena on Saturday. Here's Smith blocked by Dennis, and he never saw him coming. What about timing standpoint, just getting back to that basketball rhythm? Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. It's so much different than practice and going through drills and you know, Nick Smith is a kid that has, he got a big burst now. You saw that explosiveness at half court, but finishing at high school and finishing in the SEC is a whole different level. Dennis had the block there, and housing ovation for Hayden Hefner. Came off the Aggie bench. He's a fan favorite. Walsh will drive and kick. Here's Smith to Council. No pure shooter on the floor for Arkansas. Council's jump hook wasn't there, but then Makai Mitchell gets fouled, and he'll be at the free throw line. It's the second on Anderson Garcia. So, Tom, the value for both these teams tonight to drive the ball, what does it do? It gets your defense rotating just a little bit. Now the offensive glass comes into play. A bad shot in this game is way better than a turnover. At least you give your chance to climb on that offensive glass. Mitchell's 62% clip on the season. Got another one coming his way. Another full afternoon of college hoops. Saturday on ESPN in the app. Starts at noon Eastern with a huge Big 12 matchup. Baylor goes to Allen Fieldhouse to take on fifth-ranked Kansas. It's a sonic block blockbuster at 4 Eastern, 3 Central. College game day crew will be at Allen Fieldhouse to start the morning at 11 Eastern. And then Duke 
Heads to the Dome to take on Syracuse. Should be another great day of hoops. Don't be surprised if Baylor doesn't show up in that Final Four again. You'd look for old guards right now in college ball. And Baylor has old, good guards. Cryer, Flagler, the freshman George. And that's a real team now with John Wachachua back in the groove. Everyday John. Three ball good. And that's the first make, or second make in 12 tries. And now a near steal. The other part of that Baylor backcourt, Keontae George, played with Anthony Black growing up. I misspoke earlier. Black was the number one point guard in the country in that class. George... The number one shooting guard in that class. Walsh cut off, five on the clock. Council shares it. Smith draped, and he draws the foul. That is airtight defense by Texas A&M. Pardon me, turned it over, excuse me. Tom, the ball pressure is intense by Texas A&M. One-on-one, there's a step out of bounds by Nick Smith playing out of the crowded corner. And a little bit of bump from behind by Washington to send a message Texas a man they will trap the life out of you and make secondary players make plays so Smith to the bench Taylor kind of lost his balance going in Black had a hand on him Anthony Black is so good as a play from behind defender you might get by him but he does not give up on the ball and it's 6-7 with a long reach recovery length recovery speed is special he was a sensational high school football player as a wide receiver, but yeah. sometimes plays defense like a cornerback. Yeah, he does. A, a big one as well. Walsh will size up a three, and that's off the back of the rim. Arkansas made a couple threes early against Mississippi State, and the coaching staff... Was a little bit worried about that. Almost fool's gold. Here's Marble inside, and Mitchell commits his second. Both Mitchell twins have each committed a pair of fouls here in the first half. If you're Texas A&M, you have to keep hammering the ball inside. I know you've missed some around the rim. You've had a couple block shots. But that's the DNA of Buzz Williams. They established, they set the rules of the game early in the paint, and they build the game out from there. To your point, they are just one for six at the rim. Yeah. 0 for 5 on layups, and... One dunk. They, the Aggies, missed half of their shots in Bud Walton from the restricted arc and down. So you're talking about layups and dunks. They only completed 50% of them. And that number should be 75 to 80% when you get the ball that close to the rim. Marble was scoreless in the weekend game against LSU. Bothered by foul trouble a bit. At two points here early. I'm a big fan of Marvel. Did not start the first five games, but never did anything but said, Coach, keep pushing me and working with me and trusting me in that starting lineup now. And boy, he and Coleman are a handful. Arkansas four for 15 to start. Council too hard off the window. AM to push. And it's Marble. Beat everybody down. He's earned a trip to the free throw line. Arkansas without a five guy on the floor. Arkansas has a small lineup, and Buzz Williams sees it. His big at tempo no, we're tonight. Not we're not going to get there. If we played this game twice, we may not get there. And Eric Musselman knew what he was up against. This has become Reed Arena, one of the toughest places to play in this conference. The student sections are just electric on both ends. Very impressive what Buzz Williams has done in his job at College Station. Marble with a chance to tie it. And the Michigan State transfer has four points off from the free throw line. And we're back to where we started. Tom, the most impactful night so far in SEC basketball is tonight. Alabama gets their first loss. Kentucky feels like it's a must win for them on the road tonight. These two teams right now being projected as a 9 and 10 seed. You certainly don't want to take a step backwards. Devo Davis cut off, but somehow he got it to go. And that ends a 7-0 a and run. Who has the most at stake tonight? I, I would say it was Tennessee because they couldn't afford to lose three in a row. I mean, this is a team that was ranked in the top five, and you cannot afford to lose that game tonight on your home floor. 
Their second win against the number one Alabama team in two major sports. Of course, they knocked off Alabama football, Neyland, back in the fall. Alabama back to number one in the country for the first time in 20 years. Dennis challenge, shot clock late, and he gives it all the way outside to Taylor. Got to make something happen. And he can barely find the medal. Davis comes out of there with it with Arkansas up two. Arkansas playing with four guards and a forward, but, man, they have a lot of length on the floor. I mean, defensively, they, they take away your vision in this league about as well as anybody. Davis splashes home a three. That's his second of the game. He has really developed into a catch-and-stick guy. His three-point percentage about 20% higher than when he takes a three off the bounce or off the move. An Arkansas team that went just four for 18 from deep against Mississippi State. Marble with the ball fake. The mustache gives it up, and Solomon Washington throws it down. You just set an athlete in that dunker spot, does Buzz Williams. Get the dribble penetration for the easy kick down. Hefner with the foul, then a clothesline afterwards. It is a little bit chippy out there tonight. That last play by Texas A&M, you've got to drive that pressure off some in this game. Walsh steps up. He has to try to protect the rim. There's no backside help that can rotate down quick enough. Those straight line drives, a real problem for anyone in college ball. They never called it the dunker spot when I was standing there. What did they call it? <laughs> the spot. <laughs> just, go stand, just, go just, just go stand in that spot and do not move. <laughs> do not ever move. <laughs> It'll stay this direction. Neither team has been very efficient tonight. Arkansas 33% shooting, AM at 20%. And they've combined to turn it over seven times. Davis working on Hefner. Into Walsh. Wow. He's able to beat the double. What a terrific post up by Jordan Walsh. And what a fight by Devo Davis to get the ball to the side to improve that passing angle. Well, it's the best option for AM in the half court. Here's Radford. Well, it's been number four, number 23. You know, those two big inside guys can pound you as well, but you have to contain the guards of Texas AM. If you're Eric Musselman, I go back to this last basket by Walsh. Devo Davis just fights his way to that slot so he can have some vision of 55 in red. And, and Jordan Walsh just came across a little side screen and spread out. It was a huge target. Really well done. You mentioned that Eric Musselman's mom shared with him that he's coaching his sixth different team. It's almost, you know, of the season, it's almost like he's coaching two different teams Tonight, for the Mitchell Twins, both out with foul trouble right now. Loose ball, and Taylor finds it. And Arkansas playing with a much smaller lineup than is typical. Yeah, so if you're a &M, man, you try to pound that thing inside. Coleman's a rip driver. Washington can get on the glass. Taylor looking for Coleman. Coleman hadn't scored yet tonight, and now have a chance for three. And there's the problem when the Twins go out. That rim protection for Arkansas drops off drastically. Texas A&M not going to settle for jump shots right now with the size advantage inside. Force it. Coleman is so good getting his feet underneath his shoulders. He doesn't take off-balance shots in that power part of the floor. He stays with his power really well. Eric Musselman typically likes a nice, tight rotation. He's had to go deep tonight. He's going even deeper with Jalen Graham on the floor now. Three Arkansas bigs in foul trouble. The Mitchell twins each have a pair. Kamani Johnson has two. This is a tempo press by Texas A&M, Tom. Tempo, but if you make a mistake, the trap will come around the timeline. Good job by Arkansas to attack. They absolutely blitzed LSU out of that midcourt trap earlier this year. One of their ten conference wins against just two losses. It's been a sensational start. In conference play. Here's Walsh. He's fouled and accounted. No big needed. They got Jordan Walsh playing big inside. He is their best cutter. Jordan Walsh is off the ball. And then you talk about making a play in a crowded floor. The white jerseys are all around that 
inside lane area and Jordan Walsh with great control to hit what he takes a hard hit right there but then he just kind of keeps his poise and makes sure he keeps his eyes up to complete the three-point play really well done by Walsh offense has picked up a little bit Arkansas leads by five now Radford has been scoreless to this point and oh, wow. a nifty move will put him at the line who needs three-point shots when you can get three-point plays? And that's the second on Jordan Walsh as the fouls start to pile up for the hard. Just a great operator off the ball screen is Radford. He attacks. Devo cuts him off and then backs it up. Bam, right back at you. Devo Davis opens up his hips. And this is a kid that can take a lot of hits at the rim and finish. He wins more collisions at the rim than he loses. No doubt about it. Radford picked up his nickname Boots when he was at Virginia Tech under Buzz Williams. He said... You're as tough as an old pair of work boots. We have the two best rebounding guards in this league in this game. Anthony Black from Arkansas, Boots Radford from Texas A&M. Both get five or six per ball game. Big difference is Black checks in at 6'7". Radford at just 6'2". Yeah. He's best 6'2 rebounder in college basketball. Kick to Davis, open three. Got it! That went right eye line with us. That was in from the get-go. And again, a really good job by Arkansas to find the backside against AM's defense that is so ball heavy, tilted towards the ball. Arkansas shot 11 threes in the first half against Mississippi State. Radford, another finish. He's got five in a flurry. Well, you've got to get on that left paw of Radford, right? Little floater goes for Council. That's his first bucket of the night. It's like these two great defenses went out for a water break. Now all of a sudden they're pouring it in. <laughs> and a foul on an illegal screen. Um, here's what I'm talking about with Arkansas. A&M is so ball heavy on the ball side of the floor with their defense. A lot of white jerseys on ball side. A&M mix. Stacey Lewis, two-time LPGA Player of the Year, and her husband, Garrett Chadwell, who's the women's golf coach here. And Stacey's got quite an honor coming her way again. Well, she's the new Solheim Cup captain for the United States and one of the all-time Razorback greats to ever walk that campus uh, of any sport. And so it's great to get caught up with her about a half hour before the game. Got a selfie with her. Oh, look at that. How about this? If you figure in Stacey and what John Daly did in 95, that's two... British Open winners from the same campus yeah. joining only Texas and Arizona State for that same honor How to have that? a men's and women's British Open winner. Yeah, her, she has a four-year-old daughter now. She is an absolute grinder, man. I remember watching her hit balls when she was in college. Just relentless she, pursuit of perfection is what she is. I hope she puts better than Marty Smith did last oh, that night. That was a disaster. Foul on the floor will be charged to Boots Radford. I like yeah. what Arkansas is doing, Tom, and their conversion offense. They're not wasting time. They're pushing that thing up. You've got to try to score points before AM gets that half court defense set tonight. Arkansas have taken every opportunity. They have multiple handlers that can rip it off that board and bring it. So Arkansas to the free throw line. This is Ricky Council, the fourth. Last year, Arkansas led the country in free throw attempts. This year, it's Texas AM in that same honor. Both of them do a great job getting to the line and getting a good chunk of their points from there. In fact, AM. It's 25% of its points from the line. That's second most in the country. A byproduct of that tonight, Jimmy, is both teams are going to be in foul trouble, especially late in this game. Yeah, they are. A, a, a huge story. Arkansas has already made four threes. It's hard for Arkansas to match your made threes on most nights. Therefore, Arkansas so good at guarding the three because typically they don't make more than five or six a game. Radford on the curl couldn't get it to him. Dennis keeps it. And here's Ricky Council with a four on two. Graham, the Arizona State transfer lays it in. Tom, there's that run game. Arkansas scoring within the first three seconds of their possession. Just bringing the smoke right now. Arkansas is from defense to offense. Razorbacks, one of just four teams in the SEC with a adjusted tempo in the top 100 in college basketball. Buzz's well, team with a nine point deficit, two minutes of 1924. And then meet for the 166th time tonight. Tom, the SEC is a heavy dominated defensive league. Yep. Look at the Ken Palm efficiency numbers. And Tennessee showed up tonight holding Alabama to their season low of 59 points. And one of the ways they're able to do it is 
turn the faucet off for Alabama. Second in the country in tempo going in. Marble went down hard. Elsewhere tonight, Florida beat Ole Miss by 15. But Colin Castleton, who may be the most valuable player in this league to his team, is out with a broken hand for the foreseeable future. Yeah, if you ask me who's one guy in this league that a team can't afford to lose, it would be Florida with Colin Castle. And he's everything to the Gators. What a major hit for them coming down the stretch. Arkansas continues to win the foot race from their defensive end to the offensive end in this game. Black with the lob. Threw that one to Brian. To Sean Farnham's point, though, Anthony Black, he is all of 6'7". Yep. And he makes plays over the top and sees things over the top that normal point guards don't. And he is fantastic once he gets below the free throw line as a passer. Another three for AM that comes up short. Aggies now one for six from deep. I just think they've settled probably four of those six attempts for shots that they should not be taking. That was too early in the shot clock by Gordon. Ice it, throw it to the middle, make a shot. Yeah, simple. It's just simple offense. You're going to ice that hard and not be concerned about a guy at the nail. Make him pay every time. If you're Arkansas, say, hey, keep icing us. We'll keep taking wide open 12-footers. And to Sean's point and yours, Anthony told me a few weeks ago, he said, my height gives me such an advantage. I don't ha ha even see the defender right in front of me most times. I'm looking right over the top of his head or using my peripheral vision to find my guy. Yeah, isn't that what great point guards do, though? They're always surveying the floor, reading that second and third defender, not getting their eyes locked in on that primary guy in front of them. And Mentioned foul trouble being an issue tonight. And both teams' depth will be tested. That was the third on Jordan Walsh, and it comes with just 43 seconds left in the half. Wade Taylor, the fourth, who's made 29 out of his last 30 from the line, steps up with two coming. So impressive. Arkansas this halftime for the Twins to be in foul trouble, who control the game really on both ends around the rim, and Bud Walton in the first matchup to be sitting in foul trouble. Must has to go small. And they have done a great job, Arkansas, of gang rebounding and pushing the tempo in this game. Arkansas plus six on the glass. Really good Sunday afternoon. College basketball doubleheader on ESPN and the app. We start with 23rd rank NC State hosting Amanda Baycott, North Carolina 1 Eastern. Then it's second rank Houston led by Marcus Sasser playing host of sensational Kendrick Davis in Memphis. They're on Joe Lenardi's bubble right now. Kendrick Davis is a bucket. Yeah, he's... What, 23, 24 points a night. Houston now probably jumps back up to number one with that loss by Alabama tonight in Knoxville. NC State, I know they lost I believe last night, but I, I still love that squad out of the ACC. They're going to be in that 8-9 seed range. It's a real problem. Kerquavian Smith, Jarkel Joyner, Casey Morsell, the big kid DJ Burns. You want a team that has old guards that can go advance NC State in that bracket when it comes out. That happened very often. Taylor missed them both. Came in leading the league at 85%. Black trying to get around. Draws a foul on Gordon. AM continues to... I mean, this is, this is hard, heavy ice action by AM. Explain what ice means to folks well, who may not know. They are trying to force Arkansas down towards the baseline as opposed to taking that ball from the side to the middle off of the bounce. And Buzz Williams is determined to keep that ball on one side and Arkansas setting ball screens, getting Anthony Black to turn the corner. Black knocks the first one down, got another one coming. You don't have to be a genius. Every analyst on press row is seeing <laughs> the ice opportunities here. Casey Jacobson sitting beside me right now doing the radio national broadcast for Westwood One was the exact same thing. And Eric Musselman attacking that ice action by Texas A&M with perfection. Black goes one of two. Shot clock off for Texas A&M. Well, well, Arkansas trapped this final possession. Normally, Musk doesn't let a team just come down and run stuff. Will he run at the ball and trap it? Now you're just going to play it straight. Evo Davis, the defender. Taylor gives it up, gets it right back from Hepner. Clock at one, and they'll have to inbound with 1.4. Boy, just the long arms of Nick Smith defensively. It looked like Texas A&M was going to have an advantage coming off that ball screen. He just ate it up. 
They'll put Mikael Mitchell back in the game. He's got two personal fouls. And Eric Musselman puts him right on the ball. Hard to pick up a foul there. It is, and you're making this pass really difficult with 1.4. Probably can't throw it directly inside. Now they're going to still black on the ball with size. Now, okay, we got three guys to choose from. We go with number 11. <laughs> That's Graham, and he's 6'9". Uh -oh. Hefner uh -oh. wide open. Got it! Hayden Hefter hadn't made a three in five games, and he draws one up and knocks it down. You always remember a mate. There was sensational defensively. That was the only shot he took in the first half. It'll be Arkansas's ball to start the second half. Remember, at Texas A&M had 24 offensive rebounds at Bud Walton in the loss. Only two so far in this game. Arkansas terrific with their second shot defense grabbing that ball off the glass. Here's a nugget for you courtesy of our friend on Twitter at Hogstats. The Hogs have won 40 consecutive games when they've held the opponent to less than 25 points in the first half with the lead. Now A&M climbing back in with another bucket. So think about it. In the last 37 seconds of game action a 6-0 run by Texas A&M, two big baskets, right? It's only or the second six, three, right? But still, that's you get right. my point. It's only <laughs> the second bucket made by Wade Taylor, the fourth tonight. Meanwhile, he picks up his second personal foul. Started to go there earlier with the high volume of fouls called in this game to fit to both team style. Which team has the advantage when it comes to depth? I think Arkansas has more bodies, especially with Nick Smith available. And neither team wants to go further than seven or eight, but it may be a half to situation in this one. AM showing some zone to start the half. Black short on his three. Mitchell the rebound. You want black penetrating for Devo as a shooter, not oh. the other way around. And Mitchell yeah, took a bump job. from Marble. That's his second personal. It'll put Mikhail Mitchell at the free throw line. Tom, you want to set the rules of the game and of the half early. And Eric Musselman goes with his twins. Pounding that thing inside. These two kids are really good, man. They finish with either hand. They throw a wall up defensively. Not bad from the free throw stripe. This is the younger brother, Mikhail Mitchell, two minutes younger than his twin. That big game they had on the 31st was their birthday. They each started their careers at Maryland, then went to Rhode Island, and now playing together at Arkansas. Boots Radford. Here's Dennis, contested three. Got it! How about that? Another three for AM. And it was a guarded three. Arkansas, pretty good job with high hands on the catch. Dennis just jumped up and delivered. I don't know if AM has had a game where they've made three consecutive threes. And they've done it here to close the half and start the next. It's an AM team that only makes, on average, six threes a game. And there's no reason for them to come outside the three-point line defensively right now if you're Texas A&M other than Devo. And he left it short. Taylor penetrates with the wow. left! And he's going to the line! It's the third on Mikhail Mitchell. What a seal-off right there by Marble. And a great read by Wade Taylor to start on the right side and get that ball to the left side with a left paw finish. It's amazing. I'm telling you, it's amazing what a late first half three-point shot does for a team. And it has ignited Texas A&M the last two minutes of this game. Some deep shots and then an old-fashioned three-point play. AM has cut it to one possession, and now they'll extend that defense to pick up three-quarter court. And Jordan Walsh checks in for Arkansas. Very productive in the first half until he had foul trouble. Much different defensive look from Buzz Williams here in the second half. They're just passing guys off. AM looks like his own. Passing off man-to-man -man primarily is what it is. Arkansas is going to get to get that ball reversed. Shot clock at eight. Davis behind the back. Shot clock at five. Whips it inside to Walsh. 
Did I tell you in the first half how good of a cutter Walsh is? And the key from the coaching staff was what? Keep cutting when you run through. Why does that make such a big difference? Full speed cuts. A&M again, Tom, they are so, they tilt the floor so hard towards the ball. You've got to cut from behind that defense no matter what it is that, they, that the Aggies are throwing at you. Walsh is the best one so far in this game for the Hawks. That was the third on Marble. He stays in the game for now. Black was ready to move as soon as he found it. Cut by Walsh. Shared it. It's all about Jordan Walsh just cutting Texas A&M to pieces right now as an off-ball offensive player. Some guys can just see it, have a feel for it, when to go, when not to, and Walsh is one of them. Bam. Three ball goes. AM hasn't missed a shot this half, and they are three for three from deep. The other make was an old fashioned three point play. And now the tempo press by AM. You don't want to get careless with it. They will trap you in the corners. Reed Arena is rowdy. Davis, long two. Dennis, the rebound. AM, four for four from the floor this half. And a make here. Reed's going to explode, right? And they get Davis on the foul, trying to fight over the screen. Uh, Wade Taylor is really good off that ball screen because you can try to force him. And Wade Taylor's going to get where he wants to go. Anthony Black is icing it again, forcing him to go right. And Wade Taylor says, thank you very much. I'll bounce it, sidestep it right into a pull-up three. Well done by four. Aggies with a pivotal moment to close the first half on the Hayden Hefner free. Uh, three, pardon me. Again. And another messy. Taylor's got 13. And in with the lead. It's a 17 to 4 run. But he has great control over his change of pace, his change of speed. And that long extension with the left paw to get that thing up on the backside is a very difficult shot. He leads Texas AM about 12, 13 shots a game. He's their leader tonight already with 10 field goal attempts. I haven't had a player lead the team in points, assists, and steals since A.C. Law the fourth. And, well, he's got his jersey hanging in the rafters. Here's Black. Arkansas just two for six this half. Debo Davis with a look down after he lost Taylor and drilled it. And that is the answer again. Arkansas, you got to find the, the backside shooter. Keep Debo Davis on the backside. Let other guys find him. A five for five start to the half for A&M. Dennis down the lane. First miss of the half. Challenge at the rim. That's where the Aggies struggled early in this game. Good job by Arkansas to go to, to get their chest in front of the ball. Wow. Nice share. No whistle on the challenge. Black can't believe it. And neither can Walsh. Credit Anderson Garcia with the block. And neither can Eric Musselman. Garcia came with aggressiveness and force, but... That wasn't hand on the ball. That was that lower wrist area and an obvious foul that didn't get called. Watches have spent less time on wrist than that one. <laughs> yeah. Taylor with the drive, and it's tapped out. AM gets another possession here. Aggies had made their first five shots of the half to jump in front. Boots Radford has it blocked after a bump. Chance for the Hogs to run. Here's Council. Wow, what a move. And what a pass to lead Council. I mean, a full-speed sprint. Once again, Arkansas in their conversion offense is winning that part of the game. The game that Arkansas led by 12 right before the end of the half when Hefner hit that three. Taylor down the lane. Rebounded by Mikael Mitchell. Back-to-back -back bad possessions by AM. Ran no offense. 
just became a one-on-one -on -one battle, and Arkansas won both of them. Ricky Council, second best scorer in the SEC behind Brandon Miller of Alabama. Crossover twice, lost it. Aggies with a chance. They rarely push, but here they go. Dennis blew it at the rim. He got caught in between a dunk and a left-handed yeah, layup. He sure did. And he was just going to sit in this. It's a sagging man-to-man -man defense switching it off. It has the appearance of a zone, but for the most part, they're just switching everything off and keeping that floor shrunk. Black fouled on the perimeter by Henry Coleman in the third. And that, that last transition basket by Arkansas was special. A, a terrific wall thrown up by Mitchell. That pass, the lead out in, out in front of Council, so he can run it down off the bounce. Probably doesn't get there if he catches it clean in the air. Thrown it out in front of Council allows him to sprint to it and beat the Aggies to the rim. So how do you attack this sagging, switching man-to-man? -man? You, you have to run your offense. Like Eric said, we've got to get movement. you got to get cutters. You can't get stagnant and stationary. Move, cut, drive hard, reverse the ball. Don't guard yourself. High post. Here's, Here's the clack. And a miss at the rim. A&M has not lost an SEC game at home this season. Radford with the left, and he took a shot across the nose, it looked like, but he's back to his feet. That's his first bucket this half. Taylor and Radford are as determined of drivers as we have in this league. Walsh, here comes the double. And an offensive foul trying to fight out of it. That's his fourth. And Jimmy, he was so important to this Arkansas team in the first half. He's a guy that can't afford to be on the bench. No, it's a, it's, it's, it's a gamble cutter. He's also got two rebounds. He's just a good frame freshman kid that knows his role and has kind of starred in his role. He doesn't have the hype of Anthony Black or Nick Smith, but he makes winning plays now for Arkansas about as much as anybody when you break down film. On a lot of teams, he would be one of the most hyped. Five-star, yeah. McDonald's All-America, Jordan Brand All-Star, number one player in the state of Texas. But with his loaded recruiting class, which includes Nick Smith, who is back in action for the second game tonight, he kind of fall into a different role. 16 seconds left on the shot clock for A&M. And Hefner on the floor now for Buzz Williams in Arkansas. Devo Davis checking two in white. Cannot let him squeeze one off. Davis should have learned that lesson the last 1.2 seconds of the first half. That shot is what gave the Aggies momentum. Radford picks up a blocking foul on his drive. Buzz Williams so good. Two or three times at half, Tom, getting the play call for Radford on the right side of the floor as you face the basket so he can go to that strong left drive that he is. Not out of the cylinder. That's an easy call. Mikael Mitchell charged with his fourth personal. He'll be replaced by his twin, Mackay, in a moment. Here's Radford. Radford had a monster game against Auburn earlier this season. Went for 30 and 9. By the way, the next Southern Hoops, a history of SEC basketball coming your way. Part four of the documentary looks at the 80s. Georgia's Dominique Wilkins, Auburn's Charles Barkley headline the conference's rise. Dale Brown's success at LSU continues. Notice Pat Summits with a pair of national titles on Rocky Top. Monday night, 9 Eastern, 8 Central on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. We are tied at 42. Hogs in a drought. Can you get behind that A&M defense and flash to the ball? Cut it from behind the vision of Texas A&M would be good action for Arkansas. Shot clock at five. Black. They have gotten away with a walk. Shot clock at one. Davis wheels and puts up an air ball. Empty possession for Arkansas. 
That sagging, switching, pass it off, man-to-man -man defense by the Aggies causing Arkansas problems. And them only three offensive rebounds, and these are two teams that normally dominate that part of the game. And yeah. neither team just giving an inch right now when the ball's on the glass. AM coming in eighth in the country in offensive rebound percentage. After a hot start and making their first five this half, Aggies have cooled to just one for six. Ball fake for Dennis, mid-range. Nope, there's an offensive rebound. Garcia spins it in. The fourth one of the game, and it ends up with conversion points. His productivity, Garcia on the glass. He gets one rebound every three and a half minutes that he's on the floor. That's the best ratio out of any Aggie. AM with a 6 0 run. It's been nearly four minutes since the Razorbacks have scored. Can you get the ball to that logo if you're Arkansas? Hard trap, dribble it out, reverse it. Nice. Quickly to Walsh. Shad, yeah. he's going to the line. So well done, Tom. If you're going to double team that low block like Texas A&M just did, don't fight it. Bounce it out, swing it, swing it, attack the backside. And Devo Davis saw it as it did Anthony Black. And there's our guy Jordan Walsh again. If you're an Arkansas fan, what he's done in this game has been tremendous as a cutter, as a low post, post up scorer. He's got one coming to reclaim the lead for Arkansas. And of course, I don't know if I've seen a guy influence a game more than Walsh has in only having eight points. Yeah. Most important guy in this game so far. Taylor, floater. And Mitchell with the rebound after Walsh kept it alive. Arkansas pretty active with their hands defensively, I, I, as are the Aggies. The, the deflections are the motor of your defense. And you track that thing, how many times you get tips on the ball or tip outs when the ball's on the glass. It says a lot about your defensive energy. Davis shook Taylor, lobs it into Mitchell, adopted to Walsh. Shot clock now at six. Here's Black. Shot clock at one. Wow. And a hurried shot by Makai Mitchell goes. But he was not sped up by the pressure of the shot clock winding down. Really good patience and staying aggressive at the same time by Mitchell. Here's Taylor. Hefner into the paint. Little jump stop. Turns around. Fades. And the loose ball pinballs into Ricky Council's hands. Three on one. Here's Black. Well, two-hand flush. Arkansas on a 7 nothing run over the last 120. And Buzz Williams has to use the timeout. This thing was tied. Pardon me, AM had a 44-42 lead. And now the Razorbacks with a quick seven. Arkansas has been almost perfect on their opportunities that they've had top of each other. Look how wide they get. So you got two options, plus the primary handler coming at a small guy protecting the rim. And Arkansas has been really good reading the floor, surveying the play, running off their defensive stops. And they've gotten defensive stops after AM got off to a great start. Aggies just two for their last ten. Marble puts it on the floor. And then Walsh with the rebound. Hogs have scored the last seven. Black got a half step. And an offensive foul on the freshman Anthony Black, his second. Normally, he is phenomenal at keeping his 6'7 body under control off the bounce. Seldom does this kid charge. And Garcia gets over and does get set. And what a great job by Garcia getting outside of the yeah, arc yes. with that right foot. Well, Aggies need to figure something out. It's been two and a half minutes since they've scored. Now down five. Radford with the right this time. And it's off of him and out of bounds. Tom, Texas A&M getting this ball game. Uh, their shot selection has not been great. They settled for early threes. 
to start the game. Now they've tried to drive the ball through the chest of Arkansas without any ball reversal several times in the second half. Walsh. And rebounded by Marble. Couple misses at the rim for the Razorbacks lately. Radford, a lefty, gives it up. Here's Taylor. And they get Black for the strip. And that'll be his third with 8.01 to play. Wade Taylor with a hard cut. Just, just one pass. a and worked off of a, a high butt screen. The guy setting the screen was actually facing the rim. So you kind of work off of his rear end. And then that quick pass back to Wade Taylor caught the ball going downhill, which is very difficult to get in front of. Great women's matchup on ESPN and the app tomorrow night. Two of the top teams in the ACC. Olivia Miles, 10th ranked Notre Dame play host to Haley Van Lith in 19 and 8 Louisville. They won four straight. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern from the Joyce Center. Notre Dame, 11 and 3 in the ACC, just a game behind. Carol Austin's first place Duke squad. Taylor's got 15. Aggies needed that bucket. Their defense, though, has kept this thing close, even though they were in an offensive drought. Ball fake and a drive. And it's stolen away by Wade Taylor. A convoy of Aggies. Here's Radford. One point game. Ricky Council had no idea where he was going off of his shot fake. Drove it right into a crowd, left his feet. A bad turnover and an easy two for Texas A&M. Crowd back into it at Reed. Inside to Mitchell, and he reverses it in. Makai Mitchell's got nine. What a quick, fast post feed, though, by Anthony Black. It was in and out of his hands, man, just like that. Didn't have a big window to work with, and Mitchell has such soft paws, man. He, he does not fumble balls around that rim off. He's shooting 75% from the floor of the last five games. Yeah. And a foul put Radford at the free throw line. If that's Walsh, that is his fourth for the second time. And indeed, that's the call. 6.50 to play in regulation. For possessions that come after a pause in the action. Well, certainly this is a pause in the action. He says there's 19% of possessions within a game that come out of a pause. And who's the best team out of a pause? And how do you how do you track that? What does AM do right now on this possession, followed up by what does Arkansas do on their first possession out of the timeout? Big part of it. And it pays off. The there's pause results in a three. And by the way, for Wade Taylor, what a night. He's got 16 in the second half. And if you're Arkansas, all you can do after this pause is tie with a made three. Line change coming for the Aggies at the next dead ball. It was white jersey oh. just inside that three-point line. Daring Arkansas's non-shooters to take shots. And Council takes the bait. Walsh bails him out with an offensive rebound. Council had thrown it behind the back pass early in the possession that nearly turned it over. Davis with the whip. And a share to Mitchell. And he just throws it up blindly, but will draw the foul. We'll see if it's shooting or not. And back-to-back -back, tremendous passes from Devo Davis and then Anthony Black. And now the timeout, Wade Taylor is the inbounds guy and all you do is let him deliver it pop out Devo Davis got sucked in just enough to let Wade Taylor have a look second on Solomon Washington this is Makai Mitchell at the free throw line 62 percent clip on the year All three of these guys are ready to come in the game right after the ball was inbounded after that timeout. Buzz had the play drawn up. He'll rest a handful of guys. 
And now Mitchell has to look into the student section. He's got 11. Hogs have had an answer, Jimmy, for every AM run. Radford with the shake, and nowhere to go. To this point, Arkansas has led for more than 30 minutes. AM only for a minute 48. Radford gets it back in traffic. Short again. Garcia fights with Walsh. We'll get a jump ball out of it. Walsh has got to be pleased with the result because it could have been his fifth. Garcia is such a key guy for Texas A&M. I mean, he fights now. He and Walsh both. There's no give in from those two kids. But saves the possession. And now baseline out of bounds under. Another pause opportunity for Buzz Williams to work with. Taylor slip, turn in the corner. And he gets tied up. Possession arrow go back the other way. And, Tom, that's a really good job by Devo Davis not to dive on top of Wade Taylor because you got to protect the guy when he's on the ground with the ball. Devo Davis just simply reaches down, stays away from the foul. And the possession arrow favors Arkansas. Again, trying to get Taylor the ball on the move. Loses his footing right there. Watch Davis. Just, just reach down and get it. No need to dive on top of him. Just an awareness of how to play the game from an older guard. Buzz was wondering if maybe Davis didn't Help him with a little forearm to the hip. Been a lot more contact in this game other than that, though, right? No doubt. Here's hard, a double. Hard double. Reverse it if you're Arkansas. Don't let the ball get stuck on that side. Couldn't get it reversed. Shot clock at seven. Deep three, Davis. And no, no foul on the rebound. Mitchell had a handful of Garcia's throat. Shot clock single digits again. Council. And a rebound to Anderson Garcia. That is the guy Texas A&M wants shooting jump shots, Ricky Council. And a foul after the dish. It'll be the third on Makai Mitchell. And we'll put Henry Coleman the third at the free throw line where he's a 71% shooter. Tom, the game is hard, man, when you're a non-shooter. And Council's a 23% shooter from three in conference play. And that missed shot just allows Texas A&M to have numbers, get the ball at the rim within the first part of their possession. That'll make it a one-point game. Busy day in hoops on Saturday. Number five, Kansas plays host to ninth-ranked Baylor in a Sonic blockbuster for Eastern 3 Central. Following college game day at Allen Fieldhouse to start the morning. And Syracuse host Duke. Should be another Great day of hoops. Coleman used every bit of the rim. It's tied at 53. It was an 81 to 70 win for Arkansas and Bud Walton just a couple of weeks ago. This is much more that rock fight, body blow type game with 420 to go. Rising to their feet here in Aggie Land. Davis throws it to press row. And M with a chance for the lead with 4.08 to play. Eric Musselman sticking with his glue guys that he's had together the last 12 or 13 ball games. Nick Smith getting no run in the second half. Trusting Anthony Black and Council and Devo Davis at that guard spot. Radford drives, got a block, got it back. Smith was minus one in the first half. Couple of turnovers, didn't make a shot in about four minutes of playing time. Radford finds Garcia. Oh, what a move, but he couldn't finish. Split the defenders, but too strong off the rim. Well, both teams have missed easy ones around the rim, have they not? Corner three, in and out. Early three from Devo Davis after a turnover possession prior. But I like the shot. He has seen a really good rim in this building tonight. His feet were set again. Any, any three-point shot by Davis off the catch is a good one. Taylor with the left. Done that twice tonight, but not a third time. Dennis helps him out. 
Aggies up by two. Once again, the value of getting the ball up on the glass in this game can't be overstated because both teams are so good at attacking the offensive glass. First A&M lead since the 11-13 mark of this half. That's a sagging, switching man-to-man -man by Texas A&M the entire second half. Davis stripped. They get a foul on Taylor. Third personal on Wade Taylor, the fourth. that came with one second left on the shot clock. A 166th meeting between A&M and Arkansas is coming differently in the half court down the stretch. Well, a couple of possessions, Devo Davis has been playing up top as the point guard. He's the only guy that's a three-point threat on the floor. He's four out of eight in this game. He's 39% in conference play. I expect Eric Musselman to let Debo Davis stay on the sides and be that backside bomb shooter and let Anthony Black handle that ball and handle that point going forward. Hogs have only made five threes. He's got four of them. Meanwhile, pretty simple recipe for A&M. It's drive and try to get to the free throw line, and now it's turned over. Davis with the steal. Devo Davis keeps it, and he draws the foul on Dennis. One of the best defensive guards in all of college basketball, not just in this league. Watch his hot hands, man. He gets right down where he knows that ball is going to be crossed over. I and mean, then his ability to come up with a loose ball in the scrum and get foul from behind. Tremendous one-on-one -on -one defense by Devo Davis. I'm not sure Dennis even touched him. Looked like Garcia stripped it. But it'll put Davis at the free throw line. Just missed the front end a moment ago. Both teams now in the bonus. Possession arrow belongs to AM. They missed another one. If you're Texas AM, keep driving that ball right through the chest of Arkansas. That's Wade Taylor and Boots Radford. And send your big bodies to the offensive glass. Three wow. straight misses for Davis. 75% coming in. And then a foul on the rebound. And Garcia will continue the free throw contest at this end. And that is the fifth on Jordan Walsh. What a costly missed two shots at the free throw line. Not only do you not get the two points, but now Jordan Walsh gets called for his fifth foul. And he has been crucial. Yeah, just the, the push off from behind got Garcia out of the action. But you just tag it back to the two missed free throws. And Walsh now has to sit with 219 to go. And Anderson Garcia at the free throw line. Wow. Can't win the Knights of Columbus contest shooting like that. <laughs> you cannot. Both sides ice cold from 15 feet. Here's Black. To your point, Davis waiting on the wing. Black to Mikhail Mitchell. There it is. Davis with the ball fake. Let Taylor fly by. And a rebound to AM. Aggies lead by two. Under two minutes to play. But I like the thinking for Arkansas in terms of how their people were spaced with Devo just sitting there waiting in that slot for a three. Radford to his right. To Dennis. And it's tipped out of bounds by Coleman. It'll be Arkansas basketball, 129 to play, down two. Arkansas comes in, projected to be a nine seed to start the day. Texas A&M is a 10 seed. Massive opportunities for both of them right now with under 130 to go. And with Alabama's loss at Tennessee tonight, AM could be shooting for a shot at a conference title. I went here and there'll be just one game behind the tide. Here's Council, second best scorer in the league. Pull up three. Off the rim, rebounded by Coleman. That is, again, not the shot that Eric Musselman wants from Ricky Council. You want Black driving downhill. He's drawn more fouls than anybody in this game. Or Devo Davis off a catch and stick three. Aggies is one for their last seven. Best team in the country getting to the free throw line. Radford's going to use all the clock here. Working on Davis. 
and he shook him. Radford all the way in. No whistle. And it's shoved in by Coleman. AM up four, 36 seconds to play. Here's Council now, finds Mitchell. And an offensive foul on Mitchell with 27 seconds to play. It's Garcia at the bottom again. What toughness by Texas A&M to come up with a loose ball and a stick back and then to sprint back and get their defense set just waiting for Mitchell to drive out of control. So Mitchell fouls out. Walsh had already fouled out. They had to hustle to get Andre Gordon in the game. A&M did. He was all the way down near the cheerleaders celebrating with his student section. Buzz will be the first to tell you he has built this team off of embrace the hard parts of the game. When the shots don't fall, we don't falter. Eric Musselman's guys have the same DNA in them, but now down four with 27 to go. Gordon, an extra ball handler. Here's Dennis, and he is fouled by Grant. A&M has been on quite a tear, having won five of six and undefeated at home in the SEC. They closed the regular season with number one ranked Alabama. And if A&M can hold on to this one and hold on on the next four, they'd have a chance to win the conference with a tiebreaker against Alabama head-to-head. -head. It would be a shared conference title as they had with Kentucky in 2016, the most recent for A&M. They go to Missouri, I believe, this weekend, do the Aggies, and then back here next Tuesday on Super Tuesday for Tennessee. It was the hottest ticket under Buzz Williams so far tonight. It will continue to be just that much more difficult with Tennessee and Alabama coming to town. Dennis drills them both. Lead is six, 23 seconds left. If you're thinking threes for the Razorbacks, they're 5 of 15 tonight, but just 1 of 9 this half. And a steal by Dennis. Clock stops with 20.7 left. How about Texas A&M, Tom? They don't back their defense up, up 6 with 20 seconds to go. They come with pressure, and Arkansas was unorganized in their press breaker, caught him by surprise. And Dexter Dennis, the former Defensive Player of the Year in the American Athletic Conference, with a huge play. Dennis has a double-double tonight. 12 points, 11 boards. Perfect from the free-throw line. And he remains perfect. A&M is 16 of 19 from the free-throw line as a team. They're now plus 14 at the free throw line in this game. Black with the drive. And that's a blocking foul and they'll count it. And Anthony Black to the free throw line. That's Garcia. And that's his fifth. We well, cannot fault the effort of Anthony Black in his ball game. I, I believe that's the seventh foul that he's drawn in this game. And A&M has just made it so difficult on Arkansas's offense in the second half by playing a very simple, sagging, man-to-man -man defense, switch everything off, keep Arkansas for the most part on the perimeter, knowing that Devo Davis is the only shooter that can beat you. Black one and two from the free throw line. Five point deficit. Arkansas has got a foul quickly and they'll put Radford at the line. Nobody goes to the free throw line more than Boots Radford in the SEC. And he is a perfect three for three tonight. It's an AM team, Jimmy, that just missed the NCAA tournament last year. And if you look at the non-conference resume for Buzz Williams squad, not very impressive. 
what they've done in this league more than impressive. Well, what they've done is they found their identity. When they were hot last year in that SEC tournament, they were a hungry pack of dogs defensively. They know they can't shoot straight all the time. They made a few threes tonight, but what's, what they did, they drove that ball, man, with toughness. To your point, 17 out of 20 from the free throw stripe. They embraced the hard parts of ball about as well as anyone in college basketball across the country. Radford knocks down the second. Every A&M practice starts with a loose ball drill. That's their blue-collar personality. It ends with a team photo. That's every shoot around and a near steal by Coleman. Buzz doesn't want to give the ball up. The, the team photo at the end of the year may just be one of conference champions. That's one in 16 with Alex Caruso and company. Daniel House, here's Davis, blocked! Radford with the block, fitting, isn't it? And the clock expires on Arkansas A&M, off to its best conference start in program history. 11-2 in the SEC, undefeated here at Reed Arena.